We are the market leader for EV trucks and vans. And, and we know those customers better than anyone. Well, can, and, it, and if he wants to design a cyber truck for Silicon Valley people, fine. But I designed a truck and I know how to design a truck. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Tony A and Chris C. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Earlier today, Herbert from Brighter actually broke this news as far as I can tell, finding this German source, essentially saying that Tesla is in talks to buy this inductive charging company called Wyferian. According to documents, it says Wyferian shareholders intend to sell their shares in the company to Tesla International BV, by means of a purchase agreement. Of course, Tesla International BV, just a Tesla subsidiary in the Netherlands. You may remember Drive Tesla Canada reported last year that Tesla had an internal project Garfield that sources confirmed to DTC, which is a project focused on the development of wireless vehicle charging. And at investor day, Tesla snuck in this image that just happened to have this wireless induction mat in an image, but they didn't really actually talk about it. Before we go any further, now seems like a good time to remind you that this isn't necessarily a done deal. Herbert did say that he had a source confirm that it was a done deal, but I would just say let's wait for official confirmation. But if this proves to be true, that just tells us that Wyferian has something special that Tesla wants for themselves. On Wyferian's website, you'll see their contactless inductive charging system for driverless transport vehicles, or AGVs, which is an automated guided vehicle, one of these. And they continue, robots, maybe Optimus, and industrial trucks in industrial environments. And yes, Wyferian has battery types available for 48 volts, Tesla's next gen system. It's been a while since we've seen an acquisition from Tesla, but until this is confirmed to be true, I'll withhold diving in any further, but definitely something to watch. And for whatever it's worth, last time we got an update on Project Garfield, they were saying that Tesla's internal testing had charging rates that were better than a mobile connector and starting to rival a wall connector. We have Tesla urging the Biden administration to finalize significantly stricter heavy duty emissions limits than proposed in April, arguing larger vehicles are being electrified much faster than envisioned. Tesla is saying that the EPA's proposal didn't go far enough and it should be as stringent as California's truck emissions regulations and eliminate credits that make it easier to comply. Tesla said the EPA should actively embrace a more rapid transition to battery electric vehicles, saying that the time to do so is now. In response, the EPA said it plans to post a response to all comments that have been received. And it's through these conversations that we learn Tesla is still internally targeting that 50,000 production number for the Tesla Semi, again with higher volumes expected late in 2024. Naturally, on the other side, you have the American Trucking Association saying the EPA proposal is too aggressive and relies on technology that is at early stage, lacks the real world demonstrated maturity compared to proven ICE technology. In case you forgot what those California regulations were, they're looking to end sales of ICE trucks by 2036. In case you've been checking the Tesla inventory tracker by Matt Jung and seeing these drops in the Model 3 and X, just wanna say, slow down a little bit. Long story short, the way that Matt was scraping this data from Tesla may not be an option going forward. So right now, as we speak, he's trying to work this out. And just a heads up, as of tomorrow, the 22nd, he does plan to take all of the charts down until he can have more confidence in the data. With this one, Texas could be paving the way and serving as a catalyst of sorts for other states and hopefully eventually the nation at scale. Texas just said it's going to require EV charging companies to include both Tesla's NAX connector and CCS if they want to get some of the federal money that Texas is getting, because remember that federal money flows through the states to be divvied out at that level. And the Texas Department of Transportation admitted that the recent announcements from Ford, GM, Rivian, and everybody else have changed their plans for their phase one of its rollout. And one industry insider said, Texas's decision will put a ton of pressure on other states to adopt Tesla's NAX. It'll effectively make the NAX the new charging standard. And I think you can take it as a positive 
positive sign that the Federal Highway Administration just said that they're acknowledging the industry is changing rapidly. A spokesperson from the Highway Administration said our technical experts are having active conversations with automakers, charger manufacturers, and standard setting bodies to ensure that federal investment continues to support a reliable, convenient, and user-friendly charging experience for all drivers. So hopefully these conversations translate into the federal money dropping the requirement to have CCS connectors at these stations. At least one other state is considering giving applicants bonus points on applications if they include the Tesla charging port. Also remember, these deals with Ford, GM, and Rivian are all for 12,000 of Tesla's supercharger locations, whereas the latest public number that we can find is Tesla has around 21,000 supercharger stalls in the United States. So at least for now, these non-Tesla companies will not have access to all of Tesla's supercharger locations. On Twitter, Holmars was saying how impressed he was with Tesla's FSD beta 11.4.4 in early testing, to which Elon said, they're actually much more than point releases, but the team is reserving 11.420 for the big one. And that's it. That's all we get, so talk about a cliffhanger. I just want to consolidate all of the comments we got from Elon about India. He said he's incredibly excited about the future of India and that India has more promise than any large country in the world. He said Modi really cares about India and is pushing Tesla to make significant investments, which is something Tesla intends to do. They're just figuring out the right timing. Elon is confident Tesla will be in India and will do so as fast as humanly possible. Hopefully, they will announce something in the not too distant future. Elon said it's quite likely there will be a significant investment and relationship with India in the future. Said overall, it was a fantastic meeting and... I, I like him quite a lot. He visited our uh, Fremont factory several years ago. And so we've, we've now known each other for a while. I am a fan of Modi, so, <laughs> so I have to say that. Elon mentioned opportunity in India for all three pillars of the sustainable economy. No surprise, solar and wind, energy generation. India is great for solar. Pair that with battery energy storage and then electric vehicles to round it out. And Elon said that strategy is a lower cost way to go. He said hopefully he's looking forward to bringing Starlink to India as well for remote and rural villages. Elon does plan to tentatively visit India again in 2024. And Ashok reminded us that it's been his secret ambition to make Tesla FSD so good that it works as well as a local driver even in India, which will then prove unequivocally that we have achieved AGI. A few things I wanna get out there about India. I've seen a lot of people commenting about India and their prospects while looking in the rear view mirror. I think this deal is one that is much more focused on the future and the potential, not necessarily what India has right now. To that point, Elon and Tesla are problem solvers. And on India's side, they have a real need for reliable and sustainable energy. So seems like a perfect match. So honestly, no matter what happens on the automotive side, the Tesla energy opportunity in India is massive. And when it comes to Elon not planning to visit until next year, it would make sense to me that before Tesla would announce a Gigafactory in India that Elon may want to actually make that trip. So potentially this is not the next Gigafactory to be announced, the one that we're all expecting later this year. But of course, even if that's the case, by all of these comments, it seems like it's just a matter of time. And to everyone out there saying how India has such a lack of infrastructure, I would just push back on that one a little bit. Remember, having a clean slate is not always a bad thing. Think about Tesla not having all of the legacy OEM baggage. There's an advantage there. So when you have that type of blueprint to start with in a country, you might be able to do some pretty cool things. And don't forget, India is the most populous country in the world with over 1 billion people there. So sure, while some pockets and some areas may not be ready for Tesla's luxury vehicles, there are going to be some other pockets that are. And yes, I'm aware that even though India is number three in terms of the largest car markets in the world, according to 2022 data, I know a lot of these aren't traditional vehicles like we're used to here in the States, but if Tesla enters this market in a few years with a $25,000 electric vehicle, 
things may be a little different. We get the 2023 version of cars.com's American Made Index, which goes through five criteria, assembly location, parts content, engine origin, transmission origin, and US manufacturing workforce. Cars.com bedded 388 vehicles to arrive at the top 100 that made the list. No surprise, but of course, great to see Tesla sweeps the top four rankings with the sexy lineup. As I was saying on Twitter, a lot of Americans still think that Ford and GM's Chevy brand are still the American companies to root for because over the years, they've had slogans like Ford's Built for America and Chevy's An American Revolution. But looking at the top 12, what don't you see? Ford or Chevy? You have to go all the way down to number 19 to find the first Chevy vehicle, the Corvette. And the first Ford vehicle is all the way down at number 38, the F-150 Lightning. I don't think our group here really needs to spend much time here, but this is something that is great for the general public to see. So maybe think about bookmarking this one and sharing with family and friends as it comes up in conversation. Just for comparison, here's the top 15 from 2022. The Model Y and 3 were numbers 1 and 2, but the Lincoln Corsair and Honda Passport actually edged out the Model S and X. On the Tesla configurator, there's now a drop down for credit rating. You can put in your credit score and it'll kick out an estimated APR percentage. We've talked about this one in the past, but sounds like it's finally official. The Chinese government has unveiled $72 billion in tax breaks and incentives over a four year period for electric vehicles. NEVs bought in 2024 and 2025 will be exempt from the purchase tax, but there is a cap this time around. That cap is $4,170 per vehicle. The exemption will be halved and capped at half of that amount for purchases in 2026 and 2027. Seven. These incentives will be for full battery electric vehicles as well as fuel cell and plug-in hybrids as well. In China, the standard purchase tax amount is 10% and this was expected to expire at the end of this year, but of course it's now been extended. The takeaway is the Chinese government clearly not confident in the footing that the economy is on right now and they're not ready to let this industry run on its own merits just yet, but that just means Tesla will continue to benefit. I have no problem being opportunistic when it comes to advantaging my customers. And, and you know, EV adoption really does come down to when we go into the mainstream, you know, charging infrastructure when you're on a road trip. And we really like the locations and the reliability of their network. We have the largest charging network already before Tesla, but putting 12,000 fast chargers on the network on your Ford Pass app with your Lightning is going to be even better for customers. So I didn't really, our team didn't really hesitate because it's, it's good for customers. Well, and frankly, when you go to a charging station, it's a social experience. People don't realize it's a lot like gas stations in the 20s. And people go, oh, that's a Ford. I thought everyone had to buy a Tesla. Look at that Mach-E charging over there. Maybe I should look into that car. Well, you sound like it's a Trojan horse, but at the same time, you're dealing with a guy, a messianic figure. You yeah. saw that in the interview with Dan Yes, Saber. yes, yes. I mean, he does, he, uh, it's, it's zero sum. He yeah. thinks of you as an internal combustion engine company that's yeah. trying to do something EV. Yeah. Is he respect, in, in the talks, was there any respect? I think he is respectful, but more because of Henry Ford than Jim Farley. And, you know, okay, but, but, but the, real, the reality is America loves an underdog. And, and we, we, are, we are the market leader for EV trucks and vans. And, and we know those customers better than anyone. Well, can, and, it, but, and if he wants to design a cyber truck for Silicon Valley people, fine. But I designed a truck and I know how to design a truck. And because CNBC did CNBC things cutting off that interview, what Farley was about to say, talking about the cyber truck, it's like a cool high end product parked in front of a hotel. But I don't make trucks like that. I make trucks for real people who do real work. And that's a different kind of truck. Farley said Ford is determined to keep the majority of its production in North America despite upcoming negotiations with the UAW, and he said, we'll see what happens, but the reality is we have always been in America at our company. We believe in American-made. People will pay for that American technology.
Look, maybe these comments were just some media marketing, a little friendly rivalry perhaps, but if you read between the lines, it seems like Farley is maybe sick of being asked about Tesla, maybe starting to feel like Elon doesn't respect him as much and really, like he said, respects more Henry Ford from the past. You guys know I'm a fan of Farley, but not so much a fan of these comments, especially right after Tesla just extends you a lifeline for the supercharging network. Now to talk smack on the Cybertruck. Not a great look in my book, but what do you think? You can find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.